I was so happy you read Goldacre, and I was so happy that you read Creole. They're two poems for me that feel like they do so much in conversation with your other work. And I, I am curious for both of you um, about how you pull tradition after tradition after tradition into poems, different um, lineages and references to poetry, to myth, to history. And it all seems like an accumulative new myth-making. Can, can you talk about that a little bit? As if the, the received myths are not adequate and there needs to be, or it's fun to invent a new um, and more bountiful set of associations. One is aware that um, the particular political, cultural moment tells every story over again. Every story gets told over again. And um, you, uh, the, the, every generation debunks yeah. and finds what was wrong. And you're always finding out new bits of history. Driving here from, my wife is driving the car, I'm in the passenger seat, we're yakking about this and that. And she says, did you know about the Miss America contest? Until the 50s, for 30 years, it was explicit, not implicit, explicit. Miss America contestants must be of the white race. I was a little boy in the 50s. It was still there. And now we know to, oh, we hiss. We know to be shocked by it. What are we not shocked by now? Mm -hmm. What do we think shows that we're good people right now? So my point is not to um, scorn or um, villainize people who had that horrible, unashamed thing. Ellen said that then it was quite a long time before there was actually a contestant on stage who was not white. And all this to do with the chimerical thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's worth reminding ourselves that race is unscientific. Mm -hmm. It's a cuckoo. It's a pathology. But then it's not just a pathology, because it's also a reality. And that story has to get told over and over again lots of times. Mm -hmm. And the immigration laws that are still a big issue, in each generation, there's some, oh, we have to keep out these people, or we have to let in these, and then we'll tell that story again. Mm -hmm. And who knew it was going to, uh, it, it's getting, you know, and our kids and grandkids, if, if the world survives, will tell the story differently. That's, that's one of the things art does. Yeah. Anyway, that's an example of the story I heard today. Yeah. And this, I mean, this kind of relates to the etymology question. It also kind of relates to this conversation I was having a with a friend of mine a couple of days ago because I was thinking, well, why is it that so many of my favorite books of recent times, whether it's Lincoln and the Bardo or uh, Wolf Hall, uh, tell stories that I already know? Uh, why am I so interested in retellings of those stories, whether it's the myth, whether it's the retelling of the myth or whatever? Why do we keep telling ourselves the same story? And in some ways, I think what we what we understand is that it is more powerful to tell an old story or to retell an old story than to tell a new story, because a new story is like a new friend. I mean, yes, you're perfectly happy to meet them, but they're not someone who you have lived with all along. To retell an old story story in a way that's persuasive is to is as if it's a member of your family right and so if you know if you're going to say you know there was a story about America like I thought I knew what a story of America was I thought you know my parents are the American dream they immigrated here they started their own business isn't this what everyone thinks America is um, and, but to have someone tell another story about America, no, America is something different. America is something that excludes you. Uh, America is something that you're not a part of, is, yeah. is interesting. I'll take it back to impurity, too. Mm -hmm. You tell the story of Yggdrasil, mm -hmm. you're an American writer exactly. telling the story of Yggdrasil, and it's your story. Mm -hmm. Because it, we, um, uh, du Bois says at the end of essay in ed Educating Black Folk, he says, I summon Aristotle. I, sum sh I sit with Shakespeare and he winces not. Once you're telling those stories, they're yours. Yeah. You know, coming out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. you know, I didn't invent this language. My great grandparents didn't speak it. It's mine because I'm talking it. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, that's part of retelling, mm -hmm. part of the whole idea of myth. 